This is the same shop. Uh, this is cleaning up now. But anyway, this is uh, the framework for the Tempest. And what this is going to be is by the time they're done, it's going to be a big mound of sand. Uh, like an island, of course, and that's what, where the play takes, on, takes place. It's going to be on the Elizabethan stage. And they're going to fill those small voids. See this platform, the small voids. They're going to fill those with styrofoam, carve them down to a dome shape. Then they'll put fiberglass over the top. Then they'll bring it into us. We'll put additional texture on it and paint it to the designer spe specifications. See, so it looks side to side. And what's that prop for? What this show? This is for a party. <laughs> this is for the shop party. I'm oh, is it? Yeah. The eyes will move. We're trying for the robot. Yeah, there's a interesting, we have a theme party every year. We've had things like the science fair, and the carnival, and the Y2K hoedown, and there's always a good theme, and this year it's the Olympics, like oh, awesome. We have a thing here we call Olympics. Plan B, and Plan B is if something electronic or mechanical does not work on stage, we have a second, a way to get out of the problem. Uh, a plan B, basically. Get the person on stage if the elevator doesn't work. You have another way to get him on stage. So what we are making is we have a guy downstairs that his sole job is to make... I'm very important, so don't interrupt me. Um, his sole purpose is to do the computer moving on stage. So when you see scenery move on stage mechanically, it's done via computers with step motors, the same sort of technology a, a printer uses and so forth. So he's making a Libby robot, which was, and it's plan Lib B. So if our new artistic director doesn't, Bill Roush doesn't work out, we still have a robot of Libby to plan Lib B. Cushions can't beat that. Box is that for the Shakespeare? Is that for the, as you like it. For the part, it's for a play. It's not for the party. Play. No, <laughs> for as you like it. They, Every, you know, they've broken four of them so far. The self-inflating ones are. See, this whole shelves. room used to be full all the way down to that end of shelves full of props, furniture, props like that. This is uh, baskets, lamps again. These are props that didn't get put away. Large paintings, um, figurines, more paintings, books, faces, suitcases. I mean, pretty much everything you need to put on a play. <laughs> Since plays are about everything. <laughs> gotta have a little bit of it. Gotta have a little bit of everything. This room here is uh, what you call the mixing room. And it's, uh, we mix everything from black and white house paint, and then we also use uh, Cal Western acrylic paints. That's what we mostly use to paint our scenery. It's very durable, works well outside. Brilliant colors that you can water down and use for washes and glazes and so on. And we have various sealers and textures and we can tint our paints with the same tinting colors they use in paint stores. And we also then we have metallic paints for golds and bronzes. And then we have down here dyes for doing fabrics and soft goods and banners and flags and backdrops if they need to be supple still to keep their hand. And of course every day, big time cleanup. That's I swear to God part biggest part of my, my work sometimes and uh, we have you know all kinds of tools that we use we do everything from airbrush in a very grand style with auto sprayers like this and we have uh, smaller uh, spray sprayers the old airbrush style the Pash uh, airbrush and we have Hudson sprayers we use and these put a larger dot these are garden sprayers film full of paint Batter the scenery with them. Anyway, that's basically the tools we use, and of course our brush selection, different every different shape and style of brush, because we're asked to do so much, from drawing a straight line to patinaed copper to uh, distressed bronze. I mean, it just goes on and on, but we do it all. <laughs>